This is the open session of our MBA in Major Infrastructure Delivery at UCL. I'm Dr. Giuliano Denico, Program Director. And the objective today is to give you an overview of the program, the structure of the program, the rationale, how we developed the program over the last years, and, and present the proposition uh, over time of the two years that you will have with us. A little bit about me. Um, I'm an associate professor here uh, in school at UCL in mega project management, uh, director of the MBA. So I developed the program over the last four or five years in consultation uh, with industry and a very experienced advisory board. And we'll get to that point in a minute. Um, I'm also director of the mega project delivery center, which is the research um, arm, the research center developing case studies and research uh, in that space of management and and leadership to, to deliver those complex projects. Um, and I'm also a global head of the mega project SIG at the International Project Management Association. So we have um, several events, um, CEO keynotes, book clubs, that's also connected with uh, transforming the way we think about practices to, to deliver mega projects over time. Okay, um, where the MBA is located, so we are currently uh, at UCL, the, top 10 university global, uh, globally and ranked number eighth uh, in the world currently. Um, within UCL, the Bartlett is the faculty of the built environment. And as of this year, we are ranked number one for built environment studies uh, globally. There are several metrics um, across UCL and you can discover those on, on our website. But in essence, you are getting an MBA degree in infrastructure from a top 10 uh, university. The challenge for us on the MBA was to transform the performance uh, of major infrastructure projects globally. Yeah, um, in the sense of they're not going away. So mega projects are becoming even more complex. So from major to mega to giga, the complexity, all the interdependencies, the challenges are increasing uh, over time, and we don't seem to be getting better in delivering those projects. So the vision and the response that UCL is doing to that infrastructure provision challenge is to bring a program together to transform the industry by developing the next generation of global infrastructure leaders. And in that sense, this course is designed to equip executives, global executives um, delivering uh, major projects uh, in different continents, coming to London, coming together here at UCL in our new campus to learn from different case studies and management and leadership practices to improve the performance of delivering uh, major mega projects. So obviously, London is the place where we have this ecosystem of major and mega projects. And we have a very strong track record of practices and reports and a whole industry of major project delivery professionals if we can go back to High Speed One or the Channel Tunnel, Heathrow Terminal 5, Crossrail, London Olympics, where, by the way, we are delivering this new uh, program, the MBA program, within London Olympics, where our campus is situated in the Olympic Park. Um, then to Thames Tidely Tunnel, the big sewer underneath the River Thames, and to High Speed Two connecting um, London with the north. So that's the, the legacy that we are building upon and, and bringing a whole uh, environment of senior experts and practitioners connected to UCL academics that are delivering this program to you. Um, the story and the process, how we developed this um, MBA program, we started four or five years ago with a very strong proposition from industry. How can we develop the next infrastructure leaders in topics that are really missing? So we did a huge industrial consultation, a scientific consultation. So CEOs, managing directors, uh, directors, heads of major projects were consulted globally in different continents, um, Australia, Canada, Brazil, Africa, uh, Europe, the UK. What's missing? How do we move forward? What are the, the key challenges that we are, uh, that you are facing in your programs and how can we create a program that would address or provide a platform for executives to reflect grow and go back and deliver more efficiently um, the major projects around the world. And equally, we did the same question to the industrial, sorry, the scientific community. So journal editors, editors-in-chief, 
associate editors of the main uh, scientific journals related to project management, engineering management, construction management, topics around management and leadership in the sector, in construction, in infrastructure, where the question was exactly the same. What are the key challenges here? We know um, there are many, uh, given the complexity of those projects, and how do we design a proposition, a program to move the, the agenda forward and, and support professionals globally. Um, beyond that consultation, we formed a very strong, very senior external advisory board. And you can see the names here. Uh, the advisory board is chaired by Professor Peter Hansford, uh, who is the former chief construction advisor from the UK government. So he chairs the board and we engage CEOs, managing directors from infrastructure clients, public clients, private clients, contractors, supply chain uh, perspectives, consultants, government. Uh, we have Nick Smallwood here as CEO of the Infrastructure and Projects Authority, different infrastructure sectors. We have uh, representation from transportation, from water, from aviation. So that collection, um, the co collective um, group came together to reflect on those challenges and curate the content of each one of the modules that are uh, on the MBA program. The structure of the MBA, it's designed for full-time executives, people working full-time in the delivery of major projects globally. We're not expecting executives to take one year out and come to UCL to do this MBA. They will do the MBA part-time over two years. They will fly in and out of London to do that. We don't go beyond 35 students, and we are very strict with seniority. It's a global audience of executives. They come to London. They will form this cohort debating and discussing case studies to move the agenda forward. The way it is organized, MBAs are required. MBA students are required to be in London for in-person modules in five periods of nine days over two years. So you come to London on a Friday. Teaching starts on Saturday morning, and you stay with us until the subsequent Sunday. So you have Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, module one. You have Wednesday off to enjoy London, do site visits and other activities. Module two from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you can go back and work the next week in your major project. Now, you will come to London four times to do the eight compulsory modules in blocks of two, and then you come again to do the dissertation as a fifth block of teaching. And the dissertation works as a management consultancy project. You can uh, bring all the scientific evidence together, but the aim of the project, the dissertation project, is to provide advice, a piece of management advice to an organization. It might be the organization where you're working on and they have a particular challenge. It might be a collection of organizations outside yours, but the key purpose here is to solve a particular problem uh, of an organization delivering infrastructure projects. The classes here in London are based on infrastructure case studies. And we build the cases and discussions addressing the latest academic uh, thinking. We currently have a special collection uh, open for submissions at the International Journal of Project Management. So I'm leading that um, special collection. It's a call for papers on program management of major infrastructure projects. And that's the kind of evidence of scientific debate and conversation that we bring uh, to inform our case-based um, teaching during the modules. Um, International Journal of Project Management being the broad leading journal in this space in project management. Uh, there's nothing beyond that dedicated to the management of projects, to studies scientifically in the management of projects. The other part that we emphasize in this MBA program is the exposure that we provide uh, candidates to major program leaders. So many times, many organizations delivering infrastructure projects, they work in a very hierarchical fashion. Yeah, So you often don't see uh, the committees, the panels, the people making those decisions until you are in the position of stepping in and 
participating in that conversation. So we bring the people currently making those decisions to share in real time their own lessons learned perspective and the challenges and solutions that might be connected to that particular uh, module of the MBA. The structure that we have for the MBA, here you have eight modules, and as I said, they are delivered in pairs. So every time you come to London, you will have two modules from Saturday morning to the end of the subsequent Sunday. Briefly going through the content of the MBA, the structure of each one of the modules, um, more information on our website. Um, so we start module number one, uh, the anatomy uh, of major projects. That's very much the structure of markets, the regulations. So it's very different to deliver infrastructure um, in different continents, in, in Brazil, in China, in India, in the UK. So you have different regulations, different structures, different supply chain maturities, configuration, capacity, capability. So we analyze a little bit of this infrastructure policy and economics space um, of where you would be delivering particular uh, infrastructure projects and the conditions uh, that would allow you to do certain things and not others. Um, connected to that, um, in the first block, we have economic and financial risks. And that's where we take a look about the firm, the evolution of business cases, the, the infrastructure client, if you like, evolving over time, and what are the levers that program directors can pull and evolve business cases uh, over time. But actually, a bit more from micro to micro um, economic and, and, and finance theories on how do we manage that organization that's often a pop-up organization to deliver one single infrastructure project. And sometimes it's a, a utility company, a permanent owner, operator over time, and there are differences on how you restructure uh, economics and finance. Um, the next um, block of modules, M3 and M4, we have structuring governance and assurance. And here we go on different um, governance um, regimes in major mega projects and, and how that governance evolves over time. Yeah? And what are the mechanisms to uh, assure uh, quality and control in different levels of the organization, different boards, different panels, different committees, the composition of those um, committees, how do we deal with corporate and project governance from a theoretical perspective into a more applied um, manner, applied um, setting in different infrastructure sectors from water to transportation, from energy. So that's the space where this module um, delivers. Um, and we have uh, Professor Sue Kershaw, who is instrumental in uh, progressive assurance, uh, an expert in that field. So she's strongly connected to, to this module. Um, after that, we have designing client organizations and corporate strategies. And, and here we are talking about organizational design and development. So if you, if you want to set up a new um, temporary unit to deliver a major project, how would you go on designing the capabilities of that organization and how they would liaise with the market? So the structures that you would have in-house intra-organizationally and how that would allow you to liaise, coordinate, cooperate, collaborate with the market in a more inter-organizational um, perspective. Yeah, so organizational design, development, and the future of capabilities, organizational capabilities uh, in that sense. Um, Modules five and six, um, procuring, integra procuring and integrating the supply chain. So here we look into um, procurement strongly, commercial models, delivery models, um, and the relationship with the supply chain. So how do we analyze supply chain uh, capacity, capability? So how do we plan the pre-procurement stages and then implement uh, doing procurement and and delivery, the, the, the relationship between the client organization and the supply chain, you know, different integration uh, models there. And we are uh, as working um, quite closely with the OECD uh, on this. So we have an MOU between UCL and the OECD and uh, they have a very interesting um, new tool on procurement strategy for, for major infrastructure projects. 
So after that, in module six, it's our leadership module, building development, developing and leading teams. And here we are talking about this layered structure of leadership in, in major projects. So we have um, the CEO or the managing director, the executive director, uh, the board, a senior leadership team, and different layers of leaders across the client organization or the contracting authority and later on the supply chain, different joint ventures and how they um, lead that relationship. So from an organizational behavior perspective, how do we um, design uh, composition of leadership teams as well? How do we put in place what is the right profile? What are the complementarities of um, perspectives that we need in that organization and the outcomes that we are uh, intending to have. Modules seven and eight, uh, module seven, controlling information and systems. And here we are talking about um, essentially management information systems. So how organizations could extract business uh, intelligence and actionable uh, insights from platforms, information platforms that they might have in a PMO or centrally uh, in the organization, in the permanent organization, how would they apply data analytics uh, on that particular structure and how does that translate in terms of managing the project more efficiently? Um, module eight, managing stakeholders and creating value. And, and here we have uh, the whole stakeholder engagement and management perspective and, and how we communicate value to different stakeholders uh, inside the project and outside local communities, um, government, different uh, levels of government, and how do we communicate consistently the benefits over time during the development delivery uh, and not waiting until operations to communicate that. So in, in an overall structure, sustainability is one of the very core values of, of this MBA. So we want to frame all of those modules on a conversation of how do we deliver infrastructure in a more sustainable manner. So responsible leadership for sustainable solutions. It's one of the uh, core outcomes that we expect candidates to, to take away from the MBA. So if we chart over time, the composition of modules, um, here MBAs of the cohort blue would come to London in October they would complete modules one and two. They would come back in February, May, and October of the second year for the remaining modules. Then during the second year of the MBA from January to August, there is the period of developing the dissertation as a management consultancy project. Uh, dissertation is submitted uh, at the end of August. And in May of that year, when you are developing your dissertation, you come again to London, that's the fifth time you come to London, who we'll have a dissertation um, week where different uh, dynamics will be created to challenge the ongoing dissertation and the ideas that you are developing. Now, the challenging um, bit on that time is that you will be challenged by the other cohort, the next cohort. So we deliberately created interface points between the cohort number one that you see in blue and the cohort number two in orange. So the weeks are organized when they have um, days together and those days are networking opportunities for amplification of your network. So if you're joining one cohort of the MBA, you have a stronger relationship with your peers in that year and the two years that you will stay together. However, you will also having the opportunity of networking with the next cohort of um, executives in, in infrastructure. And that's a significant um, value proposition to, to you and to organizations where we know uh, it's a knowledge industry and, and people uh, create opportunities through different interactions. So we, we aimed to create those encounters and, and we have a fantastic new campus and building to do so. So I mentioned before that the MBA is built on science and on research and that we bring that particular perspective to the classroom to inform our case studies. So this is an example, uh, only one. We have fantastic colleagues across uh, the school and the Bartlett 
developing research in different aspects of major projects and, and infrastructure provision. Here is an example of a paper that we did a few years ago, uh, commissioned by Project Management Institute, uh, PMI. And that was a global um, study where we cataloged, so we did a systematic review of the literature and catalog and identified what we know and what we don't know and what we should know about the causes and cues of poor performance in, in major mega projects. So in essence, we evaluated more than 6,000 papers um, in three years and created this paper that had fantastic coverage um, in industry. Um, you can see um, Pakistan, uh, El Spectator in Colombia, the Daily Mail in the UK, the trade press as well, New Civil Engineer, Engineering News Record, Building, you name it. So the paper created a, a wave of coverage from policy and uh, media. But more importantly, um, other organizations in a more policy level perspective. So we saw citations from uh, Department for Transport, for instance, in the UK, to inform the submission to the UK Parliament, citing the paper, the OECD citing the paper in one of the um, reports. Um, there is a new one out with the International Olympic Committee that uses the paper to inform the debate. Um, the Institution of Civil Engineers, um, again, uses the paper. So that's the type of engagement that we want out of our research and how research is central to inform the agenda of practices that we are uh, advocating to move the performance of major projects um, forward. And um, one interesting point of this paper um, beyond the, the coverage, so it was recognized by different awards in terms of most cited, uh, it was the research, uh, the project management research paper of the year uh, in 22 by the Association for Project Management in the UK. And that created a very interesting example for us to highlight what do we mean by research-based teaching uh, at UCL. The MBA will be delivered in our new campus at UCL East, which is now opened. And the campus is within the Olympic Park. And that's a fantastic um, story. It's learning how to deliver and manage um, major infrastructure projects from within uh, the legacy of one uh, major infrastructure project, the London Olympics. So that's our building on your right. And here we are, the Marshgate building. And we have a fantastic venue for management education within that building. So we have the Harvard style lecture theater. And that's where we have case-based discussions and the MBA classes happen every time you come to London. Thank you very much for attending this session. I hope to see you in London for the next cohort of the MBA. So we have a question here about case studies and examples of, of case studies. Um, so the way we use case studies, we often bring um, a very experienced practitioner. So our external advisory board, that's something that needs to be said. They are part of the board, but also very much engaged in teaching. So they are uh, in different modules, contributing with sessions and sharing their knowledge and experience. And, all of that, it's framed in the context of case studies. So they might bring examples from some style of the tunnel, for instance, delivering uh, a big sewer underneath a river Thames, um, the governance of that, or the organizational design of high speed two. So that's one method, one, one mechanism where case studies are shared by um, senior leaders, the leaving sessions, and that creates different dynamics on 
group work, presentations, simulations, games, discussions, debates, and so on. Case studies are also covered by the scientific literature. Sometimes we rely on scientific papers to highlight a particular issue that might be on relational contracting or collaborative procurement or uh, different um, governance structures. And that is framed in the context of a case that might be in Sweden or in Canada or in Australia. And that provides the framework to discuss that particular case in the context of each executive um, globally. Another example is where we have case studies that we share in advance and the candidates would read that and be prepared for a very live discussion on challenges to solve particular aspects and problems that the case suggests. We have another question here about the international perspective of the MBA. Absolutely. So this is a global program. We are based in London. We rely and really very much explore the, the ecosystem of projects um, that we have here. That's, that's very rich in terms of different practices within each of the projects. However, our audience is global and we have um, executives joining us from Canada, from New York, from um, the Middle East, um, Europe, Africa, South America, it's a global audience. They fly in and out of London, and we have obviously examples of case studies from those countries as well. We have a very interesting question here about the ideal profile of our students. Um, the objective is to bring executives that would have exposure to management and leadership issues. So we ask for five years of experience in middle management position. And that's important because that seniority where you would have the opportunity to lead a complex project or lead teams to achieve a strategic transformation of your organization in infrastructure. That's important to bring together people that share the same seniority, the, the same level of experience in challenges that would be able to debate and create a rich conversation on topics at that strategic level on governance, management, leadership, organizational design, and all the topics that we are covering with the MBA program. So the level of experience is important to us. This is not a program suitable to people fresh out of universities or just after um, a master's degree. We, we want professional experience in middle management to enable those executives to go up to more corporate positions and, and board level conversations in their own organizations. A very practical question here. So if students stay in the same place in London uh, when they come to, to do the modules in person, um, they might, uh, we don't provide accommodation that's up to students to select where they stay um, in London. It's a very intense program of nine days. Um, the teaching days are early in the morning until uh, six something in the afternoon. So it's very intense. We have lunch together uh, as part of, of the program um, outside the venue. Um, most of our students stay around um, Stratford and the Olympic Park, where there's a, an easy connection to, to go walking in the morning to, to the MBA uh, venue. But it's up to them to select where they stay in London when they are with us for the modules.
Okay. If we don't have any more questions, thanks again for joining us this afternoon. And I look forward to seeing your application in due course.